Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we talked about beta-2 microglobulin, Benz Jones proteins, urine electrophoresis, intrinsic factor antibodies, antipyrietal cell antibodies, anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies. We talked about urine chloride, urine potassium, urine osmolality, urine a smaller gap, urine uric acid, urine cortisol, and urine ketone bodies. Today let's talk about urine bilirubin and urine urobilinogen. These can be elevated in the urine in cases of jaundice, which is defined as yellowish discoloration of the skin and the sclera due to increased total plasma bilirubin. Let's get started. Please watch these videos in order. And please, 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 before watching this video, make sure that you have watched my physiology video on bilirubin and jaundice. Otherwise, this video is not going to make sense to you. What does bilirubin mean? Bili means in the bile. Rubra means red, because we're referring to the red blood cell, because bilirubin is that waste product that you get when you break down your red blood cells after they have finished their lifespan. And if it ends in IN, it means it's either protein or protein related for the most part. Quick review of the anatomy. Here we have the liver, two anatomical lobes, and then you have right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct. They join together to give me common bile duct. Then the common bile duct will join the cystic duct of the cholecyst or the gallbladder, and together they make CBD. Not the Joe Rogan one, I am referring here to the common bile duct. The common bile duct will join the main pancreatic duct and they will open together in the posteromedial aspect of the second part of the duodenum of the intestine of your gastrointestinal tract. Your liver makes the good stuff and the bad stuff. What's the good stuff? Bile acids and bile salts. Why are they good? They help me absorb lipids in the intestine. How about the bad stuff? I mean the waste. This is the bilirubin. This is the waste product that you get when you break down your red blood cells. So the bile contains the good and the bad. It contains the bile acids, bile salts, and contains the bad, such as conjugate bilirubin, and it contains other stuff. We have talked about these in detail in my physiology playlist and in my video titled cholecystitis. Both the good stuff and the bad stuff is in the bile. Another function of the liver is metabolism. Metabolism is the same thing as biotransformation. You're transforming something from one form to another, usually from something that is less water-soluble, i.e. more lipid-soluble, i.e. non-polar, into something more polar, more water-soluble. Why? So that I can send it to the kidney to be excreted in the kidney. Because if something is nonpolar, it's very hard for it to get excreted in the kidney. So the whole purpose of metabolism is to convert something from less water soluble into more water soluble. And if you have downloaded my general pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectsnetics.com, you will recall that pharmacokinetics deals with absorption, distribution, metabolism, elimination. The metabolism part consists of phase one and phase two. Phase 1 is modification, phase 2 is conjugation. What is modification or phase 1? It is oxidation reduction hydrolysis. What is phase 2? It is conjugation. Conjugation could be one of many things, including glucouronidation. Key enzyme glucouronidyl transferase. Example, bile acids, when you conjugate them, what does conjugation mean? Join them with something else. They become bile salts. When you conjugate bilirubin, it becomes conjugated bilirubin. Why do you conjugate? To make it more water soluble. What is bilirubin? Bilirubin is the waste. It's the end product of breaking down the red blood cells after the lifespan. When you break down red blood cells, what do you get? Whatever was inside, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is made of what? Heme and globin. Heme is made of what? Iron and protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin will become biliverdin. Verd means green. Biliverdin will become bilirubin. Rubra means red. This bilirubin so far is not conjugated yet, i.e. it is lipid-soluble, non-polar, not water-soluble. 
The purpose of conjugation is to convert it from non-water soluble into water soluble so that eventually you can send it to the kidney to be excreted because it's waste. How do you conjugate it? I have a heroic enzyme known as UDP glucouronidyl transferase. It's another glucouronidation which is conjugation. Why do you conjugate? To make it more water soluble. Then send this conjugated bilirubin now into the intestine from the liver to the intestine through bile ducts. In the intestine, the bacteria will convert the conjugated bilirubin into bilenogen. Bilenogen in the stool is called stercobilenogen. In the urine is called urobilenogen. So it's two by two. We have two stories, the story of bilirubin and the story of bilenogen. Each one has two subtypes. And we're talking about two different sites, liver versus intestine. Tell me about bilirubin. Bilirubin could be unconjugated or conjugated. Heme bilirubin or kali bilirubin. Bilirubin in the blood or bilirubin from the liver. Lipid soluble, water soluble. Indirect Vandenberg test versus direct Vandenberg test. How did we go from here to here? It was the conjugation in the liver. Next, the liver will send that kali bilirubin, i.e. the conjugated bilirubin, I mean the direct bilirubin, I was referring to the water soluble bilirubin, from the liver to the intestine. The bacteria in the intestine will convert the bilirubin into bilenogen. In the stool, stercobilenogen. In the urine, urobilenogen. So what if we measure bilirubin in the serum? You can measure the total bilirubin. You can measure the unconjugated bilirubin. You can measure the conjugated bilirubin. The total is the sum of both unconjugated and conjugated. Whenever there is elevated level of conjugate bilirubin, there will be elevated level of bile salts. You know why? Who made both? The liver. The conjugated bilirubin manifests clinically as a Coca-Cola colored urine, dark red. Bile salts manifest clinically as itching and bradycardia. When I have too much bilirubin in the blood, whether it's direct or indirect, I get jaundice, which is yellowish discoloration of skin and sclera. Here's the definition of jaundice. Yellowish discoloration of skin, mucous membrane, and sclera of your eye. Why? Due to increase the serum total bilirubin above 2 mg per deciliter or 2 mg per cent or 2 mg per 100 ml of blood. So what's the normal then? The normal is just half, not 2. More than 2 is, that's a big, that's jaundice right there. Why is that? This could be due to increased unconjugate bilirubin or conjugate bilirubin or both. The cause of jaundice could be something before reaching the liver, such as hemolysis of the red blood cells. We call this hemolytic jaundice or prehepatic jaundice. This is not the liver's fault. Or it could be something after the liver, such as obstruction of my biliary ducts. And this is called post-hepatic jaundice because after the liver, and since we have an obstruction, you can call it obstructive jaundice. Or the problem could be inside the liver. You can call it hepatic jaundice or hepatocellular jaundice. Example here is hemolysis, any cause of hemolysis. An example of the post-hepatic jaundice is obstruction, such as biliary obstruction, biliary atresia, a stone stuck in the common bile duct, etc. If the problem is in the liver, this could be hepatitis or metastasis to the liver especially if it's extensive. If I have prehepatic jaundice, the unconjugate bilirubin is elevated because I have not reached the liver yet. If I have the obstructive jaundice, then you'll see increased conjugated bilirubin. And if the problem is in the liver, you'll see elevation of both. If you want to understand why in great detail, please refer to my physiology video titled Bilirubin and Jaundice. And here is a lovely comparison among the three types of jaundice. I've talked about it in detail in my physiology video. Please pause and review. What makes the color of the urine Coca-Cola-like? It's the conjugated bilirubin, not the unconjugated. Remember, the unconjugated is not water-soluble. It cannot show up in the urine because it will not be filtered by the kidneys. So what makes my urine dark? Conjugated. Next, there are four congenital anomalies that can affect the story of bilirubin. In Gilbert syndrome, bilirubin cannot enter into the liver. Remember Gilbert, I cannot go into the liver. So I will have increased 
unconjugated bilirubin. In Krigler Najjar, the enzyme is missing, the UDP glucuronidyl transferase. So therefore, I cannot conjugate the bilirubin. What's going to increase then? The unconjugated bilirubin. Can these two show up in the urine? No, because they are not water-soluble. However, in Dubin-Johnson or Rotor syndrome, the problem is in the excretion. So therefore, who's going to pile up here? The conjugated bilirubin. Can this show up in the urine? Yes because the conjugated bilirubin is water-soluble. Now to the most important slide of the video, urine bilirubin and urine urobilinogen. Normally, there should be no urine bilirubin in your urine. As for the urine urobilinogen, it should be between 0.01 and 1 Ehrlich unit per ml of urine. And since the unconjugated bilirubin is lipid-soluble, you will not see it in the urine. As for the conjugate bilirubin, this is the one that you can see in the urine. Again, this will be not a normal finding. It will be a pathology. The pathology could be because of hepatic jaundice or most commonly post-hepatic jaundice. Hepatic jaundice will be a problem in the liver, hepatitis or metastasis to the liver, especially if it's extensive. Post-hepatic or obstructive jaundice could be caused by cholestasis, Goldstone stuck in the common bile duct, such as in cholecholithiasis or ascending cholangitis. However, cholecystitis is a problem in the gallbladder, which does not cause jaundice because it does not obstruct the path between the liver and the intestine. Also, biliary duct ectasia or biliary duct obstruction will obstruct the flow and cause increased conjugated bilirubin in the urine because all of this conjugate bilirubin will leak to the blood and will show up in the urine because it's water-soluble. Now, let's talk about urobilinogen in the urine. For urobilinogen to exist, Exist, it has to be converted from conjugate bilirubin into urobilinogen in the gut, which means if there is an obstruction between the liver and the gut, urobilinogen will be lower than expected, such as in obstructive jaundice, bile duct obstruction or cholestasis or a stone stuck here. But if I have prehepatic jaundice, I'll have tons of unconjugated bilirubin. This does not show up in the urine. But then the liver will work hard, try to conjugate all of this, and if the path is wide open, all of this conjugated bilirubin will end up in the intestine. It will be converted into urobilinogen, and you will see more urobilinogen in the urine, such as any cause of hemolysis, hemolytic anemia, drug-induced hemolysis, hematoma, or severe ecchymoses. All of these can lead to red blood cell breakdown. When they break down, they make bilirubin. Bilirubin will later be conjugated and will become urobilinogen in the gut. If you want to learn more about liver diseases during pregnancy, such as cholestasis of pregnancy or acute fatty liver of pregnancy, download my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. To learn about the difference between cholecystitis, a calculus cholecystitis, cholidocolithiasis, ascending cholangitis, biliary pancreatitis, and much more, download my surgery high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.